according to President Duda's statement a few days ago, that uh, uh, he will not let anyone, um, anyone murder the Polish mining as long as he stays in um, presidency. Do you think this is a uh, goes against the efforts to combat global warming? Thank you. Patricia, would you like to say? Well, I, I mean, I, I have to say that there are, there are different, of course, different indicators that you can use, but one of them that is uh, uh, very relevant because it, it really tells us the situation worldwide is the one of absolute numbers in terms of emissions, and that's the one that, uh, of course, um, puts uh, China as a, the first emitter. Uh, based on very scientific and technical information. At the same time, I would say that you are absolutely right. There is growing recognition of the efforts that China is doing in order to uh, reduce uh, its emissions, to become even a leader in clean technologies, to really be able to um, share their good experiences with different countries in the world. And um, I am very, very thankful also for the leadership in China, for their uh, clarity and their vision in uh, putting uh, sustainability and addressing climate change at the center of the agenda of development for the coming years uh, of China. Thank you very much for your questions. So COP24 is... Uh uh, Poland organizes the COP for the third time, uh, and it's uh, and we are blessed to be a country which is getting uh, uh, better and better in terms of economic uh, perspective. So this COP is 100% funded from public money. Uh, so uh, it is important that uh, the taxpayers' money is, is, is spent for the for the organization to, uh, of of this COP. But of course there are partners, there are different partners for the, for the conference, there are partners such as IKEA, you could see also the furniture, there is Leroy Merlin, there are a couple of uh, other energy companies, and I think uh, that provided that they all engaged in the sustainable manner for the future, uh, it uh, can be also a way to recognize their efforts uh, in this regard. Uh, so, uh, regarding uh, the Polish discussion, there is a Polish uh, plan for um, energy mix which has been recently published, so there is an ongoing debate uh, in Poland. Uh, it is a democratic country, so there is a plurality of views, and, uh, uh, and of course we are all uh, having uh, uh, this discussion uh, going on. Polish energy security is one of the important elements of this strategy, but there are three pillars on which it is built. It is security, sustainability, and solidarity. Uh, and all aspects are right now being debated. Uh, part of it is also a growing number of renewable sources uh, in Polish energy mix. Poland has up to now uh, 6,000 megawatts of installed capacity in wind. Uh, it's uh, quite a substantive part when you look across Europe, it's for example more than Denmark has. Uh, recently there has been a new tender for 1,000 megawatts of uh, onshore wind published and the plans from Polish Ministry of Energy stipulates that um, there will be a rapid development of photovoltaics and wind offshore to the point that uh, uh, in the coming 15 years, one in four megawatts of installed capacity in Poland would be stemming from photovoltaics. So there is an ongoing discussion which will be finalized in January. I think then, then we will be able to have the full picture of how these three pillars of Polish energy policy are being expressed in a concrete uh, plan which would be accepted by the government. Thank you. The gentleman here in the second row. Thank you. This is for uh, both the COP president and for Ms. Espinoza. My name is Justin Kenneso. I'm with Manga Bay. There is a, a growing use and shift uh, in energy production away from coal and into uh, biofuels, particularly with wood and burning wood. And uh, this is viewed in, in, in policy as carbon neutral. 
um, burning biofuels uh, it, it, instead of burning coal. Recent reports have come out earlier this year that that's actually not true. That uh, burning wood for energy actually produces more carbon emissions than burning coal. This appears to be a loophole in the IPCC uh, studies and in the policies of, of uh, the UN FCCC. And so um, my, my question, and it's a serious one, is will the carbon accounting be accurate? Um, and can biofuels actually be considered carbon neutral when all the studies suggest that it is not? And, and really, finally, if we are not counting uh, our, our carbon emissions accurately, what hope do we have for meeting the Paris Agreement goals? And, and in this, I'm talking about our developed countries. I'm talking about the European Union, I'm talking about Canada, I'm talking about the United States, I'm talking about the UK, and increasingly Japan and Australia. Um, your candor uh, at this question is very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, let me take two more. Uh, the gentleman here in the first row. Good afternoon, my name is Olaf Bock, ARG German Television. I have a question for President Kotika. I would like to ask you, you said you were uh, work 24 hours in technical reasons and trying to get solutions. I would like to ask you for, can you get a little more into details what makes it complicated to, to reach goals? And the second question is, you said there's a rule book uh, which uh, is in, in going into details and as far as I know the pages are getting less. So what are the main problems in, in finding the, the, the concrete text for the um, rule book? Thank you. And one more here in the second row. Thank you, Sarah Stefanini with Climate Home News. I wanted to ask about the sort of the discussion over having reflecting and referring to the 1.5 IPCC report in the rule book and the de declaration that comes out. There are reports that some countries are trying to keep it out completely. Obviously, other countries are extremely worried about this. Um, considering that for the last three years, everyone has been saying you know, the, the new NDCs and everything will be based off the 1.5. Uh, each of you, what do you think, how, in what way should it be reflected in the book and is it at all possible that it won't be mentioned? Mr. President, would you like to start? Yes, thank you very much for your questions, very detailed ones, some of them, some of them a little bit digging into the negotiations. So, um, well, I, I, I wouldn't right now uh, talk about uh, technologies. I'm an engineer by formation, by training, so I like this discussion. Uh, but I think it's not the point of, of having it here. The most important is that we are discussing part of the discussion around uh, Katowice rulebook, or the, the, the outcome of the conference, Paris Agreement Work Program, that we are discussing right now is transparency framework. And part of this transparency framework is also linked with accounting. Um, so. Um, Certainly, the, the, this issue of proper accounting uh, of uh, CO2 emissions, but also of greenhouse gases emissions, because we are not talking only about a single uh, greenhouse gas uh, in this regard, uh, is, uh, is an important part. So part of the answer, I think you can get out of, of a hopefully successful result of, of this conference uh, in terms of making sure that uh, uh, at the uh, level of our planet, we are knowing exactly what we are producing and, and when, uh, even if uh, the production is uh, not combined with the consumption, because that is the, the issue that you are raising. Uh, in fact. Uh, second, uh, thank you very much for, 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 the, for the question. Uh, uh, well, Paris Agreement is, uh, is uh, I think a historical agreement also in a way that uh, it, uh, it is built uh, on different balances uh, between developing and developed states, uh, between uh, top-down and bottom-up approach, uh, between support and action. And all these elements are right now presently discussed because one thing was to agree on principles and I 
I admire the work done by COP21 President Laurent Fabius, who, by the way, will be with us uh, starting from Monday. So that's a, a great news and great encouragement, also a sign of continuity of our work. But uh, right now we are discussing a couple of hundred still uh, pages document where these principles need to be translated into uh, concrete uh, elements. So we are uh, going uh, to, uh, to have uh, a discussion. Out of it, of course, the questions of balance is, is one of the very important. But as different solutions are emerging, uh, um, it is important to, to, to remind that we are discussing with parties until everything is, uh, uh, is uh, agreed, nothing is agreed. So this is a, it's a, it's a work in progress. And uh, we will be uh, going a little bit more into details by presenting the topics on which Polish Presidency wishes to focus for the second week in this uh, afternoon plenary session. I hope it will be after. <laughs> uh, and last uh, but not least, thank you very much for raising the IPCC report uh, question. I think it's important, it is important to, to provide with a proper space to IPCC report during this conference. Uh, and uh, it is also a key input to the Talanoa dialogue, Talanoa dialogue which will be opened starting from Tuesday. And uh, we are going um, to co-chair this discussion uh, with uh, our Fijian friends. Uh, Prime Minister Frank Bainimarama will be uh, with us uh, this day also. So we have a continuity of work between Poland and Fiji. We will be also co-chairing together tables of ministers uh, in order to make sure that, uh, uh, that we can bring the spirit of Talanoa uh, but also it is important that uh, the discussion on IPCC report is properly taken uh, into account. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your comments and your, your questions. Um, regarding the first question on the counting of carbon emissions, um, uh, of course I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, um, but I would say that we, we need to acknowledge that this is an area that is constantly evolving and science is evolving constantly and giving us more information and more knowledge uh, day by day, literally. So, um, at the same time, uh, also referring to what uh, President Kurtika was saying, the, the whole point of all this uh, uh, regime that we are trying to build and the transparency and the reporting obligations that countries will uh, undertake is really directed towards that because at the end it's a regime that is going to is based on the mutual trust and the trust that comes from having clarity on what everyone is doing in in this area now um, of course, at the same time, we have, we do have, and here I go to the to the third question, the support of the IPCC. And the IPCC is not one single body, but it's actually a network of uh, scientists from all over the world that put their knowledge and contribute to the analysis and the work of the IPCC. Um, the IPCC itself, as you have seen, has also evolved in its... Uh, its knowledge about the reality of what is going on uh, in terms of the warming of the atmosphere. So it is a, 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 a process that is evolving and I believe it's, it will continue to evolve. Uh, but um, uh, as of today, I would say that we are making use of the possible available scientific information um, that the world has. And yes, some people fear that situation is even worse than what we know according to science uh, and therefore the sense of urgency of what we need to do in order to respond to the challenge uh, uh, needs to grow. And then um, talking about the IPCC issue, I think it's important also to remember that the IPCC is recognized in the Convention and in the Paris Agreement as a scientific body that gives the basis 
to the whole regime regarding climate change. So it is there, it's not only in one or two decisions, but it's part, integral part of the legal instruments that are the basis of this whole regime. Um, I certainly hope that we will be able to have a, a, a willingness a agreement on uh, by parties in, in really welcoming and highlighting the importance of, of this report. What I have seen also in my uh, engagements in different parts of the world is that the IPCC 1.5 report has made really an incredible impact on people and that um, uh, already before the IPCC uh, special report came out I was a bit worried because I saw people concentrating much more on the two degree goal and talking less and less about the 1.5. So I think that one very immediate and very important contribution by this report has been that again the focus has been put now on the 1.5 degree and even if it, uh, the IPCC is very clear in saying how difficult it will be that we achieve that goal, it still says it is possible. So I think we have there uh, a very good combination of um, an alarm uh, clock, an alarm bell, but at the same time a sense of hope, and therefore I hope the energy and the determination to go move forward. Um, Regarding the, uh, just one question about the, the Paris Agreement work program. As you know, the big change in Paris was the fact that um, um, all the countries accepted that each and every one has an obligation to contribute to addressing climate change. At the same time, Paris introduced uh, two uh, elements that are important in order to visualize uh, uh, the different uh, situations in different uh, uh, realities, uh, which is uh, the reference to the national circumstances, circumstances and their respective capabilities. So there is a, there is a, a common uh, commitment and a common obligation. At the same time, there is a recognition that not everyone can do uh, the same and that uh, the, also that not everywhere, everywhere the same kind of solutions can be applicable. There are national realities that are different and also capabilities that are different. And translating that into each and every one of the parts of the uh, regime is certainly a very, very difficult task. 